Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Mass Effect. In the last episode, we did conclude some unfinished business in the Maroon Sea, uh, investigating a derelict ship and also a colony which Cerberus had converted into husks for their own sinister research. In this episode, as you can see, we're here on the Citadel for a change. And, because basically there's some quests I want to do on the Citadel briefly, and then one more Uncharted planet I want to do before heading off to the main plot world, specifically to Novaria. We've come here to the Consort Chambers on the Citadel, and let's, well, if we try to enter the Consort Chambers, Stuff starts happening. Welcome. I am Nalina. I don't recognize you as one of our expected clients today. Would you like me to see when the consort will be able to meet with you? Can't I just go in? Mm, I'm afraid not. Yeah, you must understand there are many who seek the consort services. But if you wish to leave your name, she'll make every effort to meet with you. What is the consort? What does she do? Mm, it's difficult to explain. She's many things to many people, and something different for each. Some seek her for advice, some for entertainment, others still for pleasure. Most of the time, our clients won't realize what they were seeking until after she has provided it for them. You make her sound like some kind of oracle. No, not in the usual sense. She's merely a woman. A woman with remarkable compassion and a generous spirit. I suggest you make an appointment and see for yourself. I think I'm done here. Oh, well, I hope you'll return again in the future. We always enjoy seeing new clients. Nalina. Yes, Shaira? Send the commander up to see me. I wish to speak with her. Yes, of course, mistress. It appears the consort has taken notice of you. She'd like to meet with you now. Where do I go? Just head upstairs. She'll be waiting for you. So, as you can see, this quest is not that like anything we've been doing so far. There's definitely some weird shit going on here. Um, while I remember, I'm just going to do the kind of squad stuff quickly. Let's give Caden, because we, I've got Caden Ashley with me, by the way. Not sure if I mentioned that. We'll give him lift, and both of us are leveled up. Awesome. And yeah, so we can go, go upstairs and meet with the mysterious Asari consorts. You might have heard a lot of people going on her, about her around the Citadel, that's just general chit-chat. But anyway, she is just through here. That is close enough, Commander. I've heard a great many things about you since your arrival here in our Citadel. You wanted to speak with me? I have a certain problem that could use your expertise. Maybe I can help. I have a friend, Septimus, a retired Turian general. I won't discuss the details, but he wanted me to be more than I could be. We had a falling out. Now he spends his days in Korra's den, drinking and spreading lies about me. If you would speak to him as a fellow soldier, I believe he will listen to you and let the matter be. What exactly do you want me to tell him? Appeal to his sense of honor. Remind him of his position as a general. If you can convince him to stop spreading lies about me, I would be very grateful. Now I must ask you to take your leave. I have many clients waiting to see me. So, this whole mission, as you'll notice, whatever you're with Shaira, the consort, there's some very much sexual overtones. Uh, the Asari have kind of got that as a whole. Um, the whole mono-gendered race that can breed with anything. But, as they said, General Septimus is drinking himself to death in Korra's Den, so let's head there. So, here in Korra's Den, you can see him marked on the map, but over here in the distance is General Septimus. So let's see if we can convince him to stop being a dick to Shaira. Commander! What do you want? I'm here on Shaira's behalf. Your lies are hurting her. Good! Her lies have been killing me for days. I've seen a lot of horrible things in my days, and... There's only one woman in this damn galaxy that helps me forget it. So if you feel that way, then why spread lies about her? Because she rejected me. Me! Septimus Oraka, General of the Turian Fleet. I think I can see why you're upset, but spreading these lies won't make it better. Look, kid, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but don't waste your time. General, did you ever win a battle by moping in a bar? 
Ha! <laughs> War! That's what this feels like, all right. How did I let it come to this? So you think it's that easy? Just straighten up and act like a general? I don't think it could hurt. Huh. Maybe you're right, Commander. Shaira's worth the effort. Even if she won't have me back. This is no place for someone of your stature, General. All right. I'll go to her. After I've had a cold shower or two. Say, you're a bright kid. Would you be interested in earning a few extra credits? What do you want me to do? There's an Elcor diplomat out there who believes Shaira gave up his secrets. Why does he think that? Because I told him. Look, I just need you to convince him of the truth. Why can't you tell him yourself? Well, the last time he saw me, I... I was disparaging his ancestors and... shouting his secrets in public. Take this data pad. It shows where I got my info. It will exonerate Shaira and convince the Elcor. Who am I taking it to? And where is he? His name is Zaltan. He's an Elcor diplomat. He's over in the embassies complaining about Shaira. Well, here's to soldiers acting like soldiers. Thanks, Commander. You know, you might make a good general yourself one day. Hard to imagine a general like that getting so upset about a woman. That's because you don't understand women, Kate. <laughs> so. We've managed to convince Septimus to stop being a twat, but he's been more of a twat than we knew and has been a twat to a certain Elcor, so we now need to go over to the embassies to detwatify the twatish lies that he was spreading. Like a twat. Did I say that enough? Not sure. But yes, we can use the rapid transit to get over to the... hold on, the Presidium. And it is the embassies. Now, at the embassies, you kind of want to come up this way. This is, we'll be walking right past, um, what's his name? Ambassador Udina's office. That's the one. I think it's there. Uh, no, it's not. It's up here on the, hmm, <clears throat> got stuck there. Over here on the right would be Udina. And oh, there he is. Oh, there's Captain Anderson with him as well. But we want to get through here because this is our first real military meeting with an Elcor. Hello there, human. Sincere apology, but I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. I've come to talk to you about your little problem. Curious. What do you know about the consort and her relationship to me? I know who revealed your secret. It was a Turian named Septimus. Unbelieving. I know this Septimus, and he could not learn my secrets. The only way he could learn them is from the Asari consort. Not true. Look at this. Confused. This is difficult to fathom. If the Turian could learn this on his own, dismayed, anyone can discover my secret. Septimus is a powerful man, and it wasn't easy for him to find. Relieved. I suppose you are correct, human. Thank you for this information. Startled realization. I must speak with the consort. She will be most displeased with my actions. Anxious request. Please, human, if you will excuse me, I must go now. I'm sure she'll forgive you. It was an honest mistake. Doubtful. Perhaps you are right, human. I can only hope so. Thankful. That was a great thing you did, Commander. Approving. You see, then, not all humans are as you say. I'm sure the Earth Clan stands to profit from this in some way. Apologetic. Do not listen to my Volus compatriot. It was a good thing you did, regardless of your intentions. And so there, we've wrapped up a kind of second quest. Well, we haven't actually wrapped up the first one yet, but we've wrapped up Zeltan's complaint, the kind of second one we got from Septimus. And yeah, Elcor. Elcor are brilliant. I love them because the concept behind them is... So they live on a world that's really high gravity. 
Uh, they move very kind of, they're very thick and move slowly and kind of ponderously to, as a kind of adaptation to that. And indeed, that's therefore kind of coloured their nature and culture. They are very kind of slow and ponderous. And that's what their speech is like. The other really interesting thing about their speech is, basically, while they're normally conversing with other Elcor, they do a load of like pheromones and chemical stuff to kind of indicate mood, uh, intonation, all that kind of stuff. So their actual voice is extremely boring. Other species are completely incapable of picking up on that, and therefore they preface everything with the mood it's supposed to be in. So that's why they're like, annoyed, how could you do this to me? And it just, it's just really amusing that every sentence is kind of, before the sentence they say the tone and mood that the sentence is supposed to be in because they just can't do intonation, they just have bored sounding voices. I think it's really amusing and really interesting, and you don't come across alcohol much in this game, that's pretty much one of the only few in the game. But they're more in the later ones, they do some hilarious stuff in Mass Effect 2 especially. But um, for now, we can come back to the consort and tell her we were able to convince Septimus to stop being a douche. Commander, I recently received a lovely note from Septimus. Thank you for speaking with him. Even the Elcor diplomat has withdrawn his campaign against me. It was my honor to aid you. You are too kind, Commander. But I would not expect you to help me out of the kindness of your heart. I also have one more thing to give you, if you are interested. I'd be honored. I offer a gift of words, an affirmation of who you are and who you will become. I see you. Your uniform fits as though you were born wearing it. You are a soldier through and through, proud, solitary, alone. But it gives you strength. It is that strength that people are drawn to. It is why you lead and others follow without question. You will need that leadership in the battles to come. This may be who you are, but it is not who you will become. It only forms the basis for your future greatness. Remember these words when doubt descends, Commander. Um, thanks, I guess. Close your eyes and relax, Commander. Here, Commander. In light of your efforts with the Elcor Ambassador, I would like you to have this small trinket. What is it? A small mystery. I have never learned its use or purpose, but I sense it is time for me to pass it on. And now I must ask you to leave. I have done everything I can for you. Yeah, as you can see, you know I mentioned the sexual undertones throughout this whole mission? That's the scene at which they become sexual overtones. Yes, anyway, um, we can, we've just got to level up, so let's just do that quickly. I will give myself, ooh, another one on pistols and sniper rifles, and then for next level up I can decide which one of them I want to get all the way to master. Hey, uh, Kaden, you can have advanced lift, and Ashley, you can have fitness to unlock immunity. And that's us done on the Citadel for now. That was the only kind of quest series I wanted to take care of. So we're going to head back to the galaxy map, editing magic. So, like I've said, I wanted to get one more side quest done before Novaria. That will therefore make this a, probably a slightly longer episode, but oh well. Um, what we want to do is come to the Atacan Beta system, the one with Ferris in, well, the Atacan Beta cluster, but the system will be Hercules, the other one in the cluster. Message coming in. Patching it through. Normandy, this is Alliance Command. We're detecting your presence in the Attican Beta Cluster. One of our surveillance drones was gathering intel on Geth activities in the region when it was spotted and shot down. You need to go groundside and recover the drone's data module before the Geth find it. So, we've been given a little mission there. Uh, first, though, there's a few things we can scan before doing that particular mission. There is Saeed. Uh, Sire dead, actually, which, when scanning, we discovered a large debris field in geosynchronous orbit. Chief Engineer Adams conducted several detailed sweeps of the area and detected a few items of interest, including a League of One medallion encased in lead moulding. There's then, there is this planet down here, Zathorus. 
That's a good name as well. A lot of good names this episode. And if we scan this, um, while scanning this planet, you detect a large deposit of gold on a nearby moon. And then the actual planet of interest is this one, Elatania, which is a really nice name. And it's a really cool looking planet, so let's land on that. Elatania appears to be a world eminently suited for colonization. Sadly, appearances are deceiving. It is covered by a verdant carpet of mosses, algae, and lichen, and possesses a thick oxygenated atmosphere, but the animal kingdom is a web of microscopic symbiotic creatures. These are impossible to filter from the air, and are necessary for the native life to thrive. Unfortunately, they cause anaphylactic shock by when inhaled by non-native life. In short, settlement requires either fully sealed environmental suits, or replacement of the entire world's ecosystem. Some have proposed limited colonization at altitudes above the symbiote's range, or in areas where favourable winds keep the air clear. So, we now begin one of the most ridiculous missions in the game. <laughs> You'll see what I mean shortly. Elatania is another planet that looks quite similar to Chaska and Nodacrux, these kind of green planets. All look kind of similar, except for this one's kind of blue. And it's got rings across it, which look really cool. And it's got a huge moon. So yeah, it's a pretty awesome world, actually. I really like it. And I like the concept of like, the toxic hazard. Uh, I, think this, I think this is the only world with a toxic hazard at all. Uh, they're usually heat or cold. Anyway, we're coming across here, I was going to cut, but I'm not going to bother now, we're coming across kind of this first point here, which is indeed the crash probe that um, Hackett wanted us to investigate, so if we come down to it, now begins the silliness. So, you will see that creature, and that creature next to it, and when we examine the probe... This is the surveillance drone, but where's the data module? A monkey-like creature seems to have made off with the data module. We're doing this the hard way. Apparently. Um, <laughs> yeah, ridiculous, I know. Anyway, we're going to go to the point right next to here where there is a mineral. Again, I'm not going to bother cutting, actually, uh, because... So, you'll notice that there are four points on the map which are marked in gold rather than the usual kind of, like, black. Those are the, basically, four points that only appear once you skip scan the module, and they are four, they are literally called this, space monkey colonies. And one of those has the data module, and it's your job throughout this, this mission to work out which of those colonies has the space monkey with the module on it. Yeah, that's what I mean when I said this quest, vaguely ridiculous. Anyway, we have successfully surveyed a large deposit of gold, but I'm not going to be going to all the space monkey colonies, I'm going to be going to one of them to kind of just show them what they're like, and then going to go to the one, because we'll go through that one naturally, and then go to the one that actually has them on it. So we're going to head to the point to the, to the north from here, one of the gold ones. So, this is a space monkey colony. And if you get out, you can see them just kind of like waddling around like they do, and if you search them, oh dear god, if you search them, they make a weird noise, and it tells you they don't have the module, or it tells you if they do. None of these ones have the module, but here's a like, little side thing, you can shoot them. Personally? I would have just thrown a rock at him. Remind me to stay on your good side, Commander. So, for the first one you kill, it doesn't. if you kill any of the other ones, it doesn't make any difference, but the first one you kill gets you a bit of unique dialogue and four renegade points uh, for being a dick to a monkey. Um, anyway, we're now going to head to the point to the kind of northwest of here, uh, which is the uh, one of the colonies, and that's the actual one where the data module can be found. So, as we arrive here, we'll see that this one is kind of a... It's gone as well as having the monkeys. Uh, oh, I landed on one. That was unpleasant for him. This one also has a building. This kind of, like, mineshaft-style build. Well, it is a mineshaft. That's literally what it is. And we need to go in here. This is the colony with the correct monkey in it. But the monkey is down in the mine. Of course, he's taken the data module down there. This is a ridiculous mission. I don't know who thought it of and thought it was a reasonable idea. I mean, yeah, it's kind of amusing, but it's also ridiculous. Um, but anyway, this is... We've seen this structure of mine before. Uh, none of these monkeys have the module. None of these pigs are my parents. If we then decrypt this... It doesn't have a monkey in it. No, this just has some kind of weapons in it. Actually, that brings me on to something I meant to discuss. While we were fighting some things, we got various weapons and stuff, and I've been kind of equipping them. But you will notice my pistol is actually has, and you, we will start getting more of these now, certain types of weapon, kind of high-end ones, actually have two slots for a kind of um, weapon upgrade. And so like you can put two different ones in. So that means there's a lot more kind of combinations for potential customization, but only like higher-end weapons will do it. Additionally, higher-end armor will have multiple slots on it for 
uh, like the ar armor upgrades. My current one only has one, but some have two, and I believe some of the really late game ones might even have three. Can't really remember. But anyway, uh, there is... Oh, I thought there was a crate over there. It was a damn monkey. Anyway, we're nearly where we actually want to be, which is... Not that monkey. Well, let's search this monkey anyway. Now, these are all random. There's only one specific monkey which has it, and he is through here. <sighs> so I, I just even don't even know what to think about this quest. Anyway, there, if we search this monkey... Uh, oh, if we search this monkey... He dropped the data module! It's a miracle the data module's still intact. Joker can transmit this info to Alliance Command. But, if you remember what Admiral Hackett said, he said that we needed to get a module before the Geth found it. And indeed... Geth! Yay! They kind of follow you into the mine. Clearly they were incapable of tracking the monkey on their own. They had to wait for us to do that. But you can... There are a lot of Geth here. It is... Oh, good God. It's possible to get annihilated here if you're not careful. Oh, dear Lord. Um, I'm gonna use a shield boost here. I'm gonna shoot you. And I'm gonna shoot you. And I'm not gonna shoot you because you're behind a box. Let's see if I can hit you with a grenade. Oh, wallop! Yes! Got him. Uh, what's going on over here? Okay, we're all uh, good. Oh, there's still a live destroyer by the looks. Oh, nope, there we go. But the quest is actually complete. Like, you don't technically need to fight the Geth. The quest is concluded by just searching the final monkey. Uh, if we come in through this building, this is like the way we didn't come. Um, so through here is a crate, uh, which will have some cool shit in it. Probably, maybe, I don't know. Uh, bloop, bloop, bleep. Oh, no, not really. It's a sniper rifle we've had for about 10 levels, uh, at least. Anyway, we're done in the mine here. We fought all the Geth, so I'll meet you back on the surface of Elatania. So, back on the surface, there's still a few more things we can do. Elatani is unusual in that, because I think it has, cause it has so many of these monkey points, it only actually has two mineral deposits other than, like, the usual three. But anyway, if we come down to the kind of the southwest, uh, the point that's kind of south of the colony there, we will probably see the colony from it, is some rubble. And rubble is rubble is rubble. Somehow none of this rubble was taken by a space monkey, which I guess is fortunate. And that just gets us some uh, upgrades... And then, yeah, you can just see there's kind of like that thing to the north as a monkey colony, but we're not going to go there. We're going to go to the point to the southwest of here, which is the final mineral deposit. Now, with this particular mineral deposit, you have to be quite careful with your parking so that you don't suffer the same fate that I suffered on Solcrum of parking the, the Mako somewhere, falling off the sides of it, and then dying due to the toxic hazard, which is a real risk on this planet. Anyway, that's some palladium, and there is just one more point for us ready... Ready? I said, Caden said ready to move, and I just read what he said rather than what I was actually thinking. There's only one more point left on the map, which is that anomaly all the way down to the south. So, we get to this thing, which looks seriously cool. Um, in the town where I grew up, there's like a kind of, we have a weird set of sculptures similar to this. It's like a kind of series of balls with water pouring down them, but they look kind of like this. This is kind of cool. It's reflective, but it doesn't reflect us for some reason, um, and it's slightly glitchy with the shadows. But yeah, Prothean Ruin, so I wonder what's in here when we recover it. If we recover it, bleep, bleep, bloop, bloop, bleep, we get nothing. It just raises into the air and becomes a mysterious globe. What I'm about to do, you can only do if you got the trinket from Shaira, which is why I decided to do that this episode. That unlocks what you're about to see. I'm going to stop talking, otherwise the heat has the heat has a toxic hat that's going to build too high. So let's examine the mysterious globe. Examining the strange Prothean artifact reveals a small, irregular slot on the underside of the surface. Remembering the strange trinket you received from the Asari consort on the Citadel, you pull it out and place it into the slot. The ball explodes in a brilliant flash of white light, momentarily blinding and disorientating you. Slowly, your senses return as you wake from a deep sleep. You are alone in the forest, though you are not far from the caves you share with the others of your tribes. There is a pain and a small lump in the back of your skull, as if a chip of flint has been forced under the surface of the skin. Leaning on your bone-tipped spear for support, you rise to your feet. A sound draws your attention upwards, where a strange creature hovers above you. It is unlike the birds you hunt by the lake's edge. It has no wings, no head and no wings, and yet somehow it flies. It is a beast of shining silver, hanging motionless in the sky like a cloud. You sense it is watching you, studying you. Raising a hairy fist, you shake your spear at it in anger, and the creature rises up quickly until it disappears from view. With a satisfied grunt, you make your way back to your caves and the rest of your tribe. 
You fall into the familiar patterns of life, the hunt for food, the struggle to claim and keep a mate, the battles against other tribes that would claim your territory. Days roll into nights and back into days. Each time you rise from sleep, there is a sensation that you are not alone, that some other is with you, sharing all you see, hear, and feel. At these times, your hand goes up to the strange lump at the back of your skull, and you remember the silver creature in the sky. The air grows colder and winter falls. You must range farther for food, clutching the furs tight against you to ward off the chill. It's on one of these long hunts that the strange bird returns. You hear it before you see it, its call a deafening roar as it descends down from above, swooping down on you. A single great eye opens on the underbelly, a glowing red orb. You try to run, but a finger of red light extends from the eye and engulfs you, and all goes black again. You wake an instant later to find yourself on Elatania, lying on your back, the Prothean artifact looming above you undamaged and your companions standing over you. They help you to your feet, puzzled. There was a flash of light and you just sort of toppled over, one explains. Are you okay, Shepard? The other asks. You don't answer right away, wondering at the implications of what you have seen, the memories of a Cro-Magnon hunter captured by an implanted Prothean data recorder. How long did they study the primitive humans, observing them, analysing their results at their base on Mars? And what, if anything, did they learn from us? I'm fine, you finally reply, realising this is a mystery you will probably never solve. Forget about it. So, that's the real reward you get from Shire and the Consort, and it's easy to miss! Because there's nothing that kind of tells you that's what you do, but you get that really cool scene that gives some background on kind of the Protheans that they were studying us, because we knew they were on Mars, because that's where we found like their ruins that led us to develop Mass Effect technology, but I think that's a really cool kind of I'd seen there, which explains how they were kind of studying early humanity. Anyway, it's been a long episode. It's probably been about 25 to 26 minutes. So I'm going to hold it there. But thanks very much for watching. And next episode, I assure you... Oh, dude, cool view. I assure you we will be getting on with the final... Well, not the final. With the next plot world, Novaria. That is definitely 100% what we will be doing that next episode. So thank you very much for watching. I've been the Doctor with the Infamous Gentleman. And this has been Mass Effect. Good day. How you holding up, Lieutenant? Not too bad. No headaches worth mentioning lately. Maybe I'm getting used to the strain. Maybe you've just got a good stress release. I know that knocking the geth on their synthetic asses gets rid of my headaches. Alliance officials report that a geth incursion into the Armstrong Cluster has been repulsed, with the geth suffering heavy casualties. In the event of future geth activity, the Alliance plans to maintain a strong security presence in the area.